Huh? Ball fondlers? Yeah, I can go for some ball yeah, fondlers. Yeah, ball fondlers! This is Protea. Donkey! Swaz the lie, you Perengi, look in us children. How the hell are ya? Protein shake tea girl. The Vauban sister wore a frame that also enjoys tossing balls around the battlefields, a devastating force on any battlefield. She is capable of light crowd control, crazy damage, heals, energy and ammo for days and is overall one of the most enjoyable warframes to command. If you like engaging gameplay, then Protea is for you. Now you can farm this ball fondler from the Granum Void, aka, Hell. There are three levels of difficulty here and each one drops a different part needed to craft this girl. Neuroptics drops only from Venus, Mars and Phobos Granum Void missions. The chassis only drops from Jupiter and Neptune. The systems only drops from Neptune or Pluto. So how do you enter the Granum Void? Well, they only appear in Corpus ships. So basically any mission that is represented by a ship orbiting the planet. After 5 minutes, give or take, a corpus scrub will appear somewhere in the mission. Remain secure from the grasp of the idol. He will be marked. Go murder his ass before he escapes. You should kill this bastard every chance you get because the keys he drops stack. Then locate the golden hand statue and talk to the hand. Now you are in the Granum Void, the objective is to kill as many of these adult Caspers as possible within the given time. If you hit the mark, then you hit C rotation and might get the part you need. Rinse and repeat this roughly 1659 times and I am sure you will have Prote ready to build by then. If you need a better guide on how to do freaking Granum Void, then let me know in the comment section. For now, let's get into it. Protea's passive ability is the fact that she comes with a built-in aura forma, which means that any type of aura modification will fit here, yay for democracy. The next thing is that Protea will automatically super boost every fourth ability cast. This boost is a flat 100% power strength increase. At the bottom right of the screen, you will find a gauge that indicates how far along you are in the casting count, when it hits 100% after 3 random casts. The next cast will receive the boost. Now then, let's roll right into her first ability. Water Balloon Bonanza Protea violates everyone's personal space by tossing her balls at them. If you tap this ability, she will dispense three balls that produce a vortex of funky shit that cuts enemies up pretty good. Now these fruit ninja vortices deal slash damage with a 33% chance to cause bleeding. If you can recall any of my damage videos, then perhaps you now realize that this girl is going to be pretty damn good against Grenier and Infested. Not so much against Corpus though, which is just fine, regardless of what you are up against. The shrapnel from the vortex will also stagger enemies to infinity and beyond. So at least you will always have the benefit of crowd control. By holding this cast, you will produce four shield satellites. If you touch these balls consensually, they will instantly replenish 500 shields to whoever picked it up. Furthermore, your shields will be supercharged and replenish 50 points per second, even while taking damage. In other words, you could in theory have infinitely regenerating over shields if you keep picking up a new satellite after one is destroyed. This works on teammates, companions VIP targets and more. Do not worry about your teammates too much though. Their dumb asses are probably too busy playing Rambo mode solo somewhere on the other side of the map. Just wait until they are downed, then run over to them and throw some balls on them and also teabag the living shit out of them, especially if it is a fuck Fucking Wukong. Anywho, that's about all you need to know here. Let's shoot into the next ability. The Jackal's Favorite Gun This turret, which totally isn't a turret according to DE, is summoned by Protea. It will hover in the spot where it was originally cast and it will auto-target the nearest goobers with 100% crit chance and 100% status chance. For each enemy hit with the plasma blaster, it will increase its damage by 100%. 
so lining pools up or generally placing a turret in clusters of douche bags will really light shit up like a Christmas tree. With this turret, you will be dealing mainly fire damage, which will barbecue infested nicely and help melt granier scum to a puddle of pus and human fat residue. You can place up to three active turrets simultaneously and I would highly recommend timing your turret cast to be the fourth cast when you need to kill shit quickly. This way you will take advantage of Protea's passive ability that was mentioned at the beginning of this video. Now then, we could go on and overcomplicate this with silly damage equations but bottom line is this, you can either modify for high duration which will mean the turrets will fire more shots over a longer duration and increase its own damage by hitting enemies, or, you can modify for full strength, which will drop less shots but multiply a higher damage rate. Personally, I find leaning into duration with the splash of strength is the perfect balance considering your entire get up. But you do the math your damn self if you are a big dick damage whore. Moving on. Oh my god, another freaking alien wisp cabbage. Now here is the deal, this thing seems pretty easy and maybe even boring but there are some things that are crucial for you to know if you wish to call yourself a decent protea player. What happens here is your warframe deploys a robotic solid head that will produce three pickups in a fixed rotation. Health will drop first, followed by ammo and finally energy. If you pick up one of these, for example ammo, the cabbage will begin cooking up a new ammo drop to replace the one you just consumed, which will take three seconds. Same goes for all the other drops. The health orb, you should know, is not a common one. It is an enhanced health orb that will give you 100 health back instead of the regular peasant 25. Now then, if you wish to load up on several drops, or give Mirage something to blow up, then you can cast the cabbage, let it produce the first three drops, then recast it somewhere else and let the second cabbage produce another rotation of drops. You see, you may only have one single cabbage active at all times, but the drops from them are permanent until picked up. So with this method, you can load up on drops at select locations for more convenience. For example in between waves of a defense mission or something. You also will not have to worry about teammates stealing your drops. Each player has their own instance of the cabbage drops so no one is losing anything to anyone. Increasing your power. For example by means of your passive, will increase the chance that the cabbage might drop double pickups. So for example two health orbs instead of just one. On a final note, let me make this very very clear so there is no misunderstanding here. If you deploy this cabbage and then walk away, it will not continue producing drops until its time runs out. No, it will only produce one rotation of the three fixed items and then stop until you come and pick something up. Only then will the cabbage strive to replace it, so in case your monkey brain is not having an epiphany right now, that means it is advisable to either stay near the cabbage or cross its path frequently to make sure you are always picking up every interval and thus getting the most out of casting it in the first place. Now then, let us not waste more time here and talk about the final ability on this ball tickler. Cheers love, the cavalry's here! Wait, Operator, are we really doing this shameless Outriders plug just to do a shitty pun? You're damn right we are. But, this is Warframe, and as you know, Warframe fangirls consider Rebecca the true waifu of the universe and will like to pretend that other games are against the law. Yeah, well, I think it's safe to assume that the tenor of culture will appreciate the variety and uh, being introduced with a new game, whereas the other simps can just go down along with Warframe as it drags them to the abyss. No argument there. Alright then, so Protea clearly cosplays the trickster class from the upcoming looter shooter game, Outriders. Just like him, Protea will drop an anchor point in time that she can rewind back to, either when she is killed or upon reactivating. That's not all there is to it but I will say this now, this ability is about as useless as Grendel in a spaghetti sauce. There simply is no tactical reason in the game ever that would justify this ability. Not one. I do not give two shits if your favorite YouTuber, titty streamer, clan leader, or even DE themselves told you otherwise. Temporal Anchor has no business being in a game such as Warframe but alas, here we are. 
so what happens here is upon casting, you have 3 seconds of god mode and your state at the moment of casting is recorded. So your health, your ammo, your energy levels and so on. All of these are recorded. Okay cool but so what? Thing is, if you recast this again later down the line, you literally revert back to that exact recorded state, which means that you can spam the hell out of everything while temporal anchor is active and then just rewind time and get everything back, for free essentially. And this is how the plebs usually use this ability, nothing more. The other thing is that all of the damage you deal while this is active, is stored until you recast, because when you recast, a portion of that damage is dealt to enemies around you as you start to rewind back to where you first activated the anchor. Sounds kinda cool right? Wrong. Because the portion of damage you deal is converted into blast damage. Blast damage is a niche damage type and is basically dog shit against anything that is relevant. The temporal blast will also knock down and pull in enemies toward the center of the explosion, which is also useless since you tend to move around a lot in Warframe and chances are that you will rewind to the other side of the map where you simply have no benefit from the effects on enemies that are being clustered in another universe, unless of course you find pleasure in running around in circles to ensure you are always near your anchor point. At the end of the day, you can do whatever the hell you want. I do not care, but if you want to have a more fun and engaging experience with Protea, then allow me to suggest replacing her stupid 4th ability, with the Helminth ability, and power. To begin explaining why this ability makes the perfect and most fun Protea, I must show you my build. Here you go. Now here is how this works. Actually, you know what, operator, you, explain this fucking build your damn self. You owe me for making me do that Outriders plug. Good luck you little shit. Cephalon, shutting down. Uh, Cephalon? Hello? Yo, get your ass back here, finish your job. Hello? Cephalon. <sighs> Fine. Fine. Alright guys, so since I have to do everything my damn self, I guess I'm going to go ahead and explain this really, really, really quickly. So as you can see my build, and I can already hear you go, Man, 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 this build is garbage, Jesus, why are you doing this? Listen here, noobs, okay? It's real simple. The temporal anchor ability is dog shit, as Cephalon just explained. So I went ahead and replaced it with Empower, because Empower is just the perfect synergy for my play style that revolves around this particular build. Keep in mind, Protea has a passive ability that grants every fourth ability cast 100 extra power strength okay 100% power strength bonus okay so you will probably with Protea already be trying to time which ability is going to be cast fourth so that you can gain that extra um, ability strength right we also have an ability the dispensary right that drops a health orb and an energy orb and ammo of course now that's why i have energy conversion and health conversion in here you see with energy conversion if i pick up an energy orb which i always will be doing as long as i have my dispensary up right then i will be granted 50 percent more ability strength to my next cast right also, if I cast Empower, 50% ability strength to my next cast, right? And Growing Power, upon applying status effects with my weapons and shit, which is all the time, because let's face it, you're not just standing around in a corn jerking off, you're actually killing things in the game, or at least you should be, you get another bonus of 25% ability strength, right? And, uh, last but not least, the health conversion for the health orbs that I'll pick up from the dispensary, which will grant me up to three hovering cubes around my body. Those are the cubes that you see around me, right? The yellow ones. Uh, up to three of them, and each one of those grants me 450 extra armor, which is why my Protea doesn't need her temporal anchor to survive. She can survive just fine with this here and dispensary giving her... Um, armor all the time and also giving her health back keep in mind these health orbs from dispensary give you 100 health back instead of just puny 25 which is also the reason why i can go ahead and use hunter adrenaline so that i can actually take a little bit of damage and of course arcane guardian and grace help as well now if you heard correctly you have three instances one two 
three instances plus her passive. That's four separate instances that are constantly buffing her next ability cast. Now, sometimes if you cast it just right, you can make that fourth ability have all of these effects present at the same time. I'm not 100% certain if they actually stack, but I think they do. At least they should, right? Because this one does. So if you cast them all in perfect symphony and harmony with one another, whatever that fourth ability cast is going to be is going to tear shit the fuck up, which is amazing, right? And since you're playing Protea all the time in exactly that manner to where you're just constantly casting things, you're constantly looking at how do you time which cast and when and whatnot, this just makes for such a beautiful synergy and a really engaging, very fun and very survivable and highly, highly destructive build in my opinion. Plus, this cast right here is super cheap. So even if you don't use it for empowering the next ability cast, you can use it to skip a cast of the other two when you don't need it. Because sometimes, let's face it, you've got enough balls all over the place. Sometimes you don't need a turret just right now, and you already have a dispensary dispensed. So you won't necessarily want to recast any of these, because it's just a waste of energy. So you might as well empower the next one, which is probably going to be the turret. So, there you have it. There's my explanation. The Cephalon can go screw himself. Y'all, however, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and all that good shit. Come see me on stream sometime, and until then, peace the hell out. And fuck off.